Welcome back to AZ Audible's Jordan Spurgeon here with Zach Alvira and Eric Sorensen. Thanks for tuning in. AZ Audible's brought to you by Ortho Arizona. We appreciate their support. So guys, we're here the last week of the big school regular season. Lots of movement, lots of things being shaken up last week. This has been a really crazy time in the high school football scene. Um, I know I haven't been out there in the trenches as much. I've been preoccupied with Diamondbacks World Series stuff in this playoff run, which has been crazy. So I'm turning to you guys on some of your expertise here, of course, because you were two of the best in the business. So I want to start in 5A. Things are Getting interesting. I think a week ago, people would maybe pick a different 5A champion based on who would have been in the open. But Desert Edge, tough loss to Cactus. Desert Mountain gets plowed by Higley last week. Who's your guys' favorite right now? Eric, we'll start with you. I'm still going to stick with Desert Mountain. I think you can put a bit of an asterisk on that loss to Higley. Yeah, things got sideways in the second half, but Desert Mountain played without seven starters who were out with injury. And I just look at the experience, guys. You know, Santana Wilson, Elijah Mears, Jack Freeberg, um, Brady McDonough, Dylan Tapley. Those guys have been playing a lot of football and they've been playing at a pretty high level over the last couple of seasons. Conrad Hamilton is one of the most elite coaches in the entire state of Arizona that I don't think gets talked about enough. I think they're battle tested enough. They've, they've, they beat Cactus. They beat ALA Gilbert North. They also beat Horizon. And as we ramp into the final week of the regular season and into the playoffs, the thing that may help both Desert Edge and Desert Mountain, sometimes a loss isn't necessarily a bad thing. I understand. I understand they got both these teams are no longer in the open conversation. But when you can take a step back as a coaching staff and sort of reassess where things went wrong in a loss, especially late in the season, it can really help in the postseason. Yeah, Eric, I hear Desert Mountain obviously going to be really tough in the 5A conference, assuming they come out of the open division. As we've seen, we don't know exactly what's going to happen on Tuesday because the open formula is a mystery and it does some weird things all the time. Uh, but I'm still going to stick with Horizon as my 5A favorite. I've seen this team play. I've seen them in the, in the summer, you know, practicing and getting ready for the season as well. They have the offensive line to compete with anybody. They have two quarterbacks who can go at any time. And especially with Jace Ashley being the starter, I know he went down with a uh, with a concussion, I believe it was against Higley, the game that I was at. But Zach Jones has stepped up big time, too, and they are both capable of leading that offense, especially when you've got Bodie Zamorino and, all, and Anthony Segura running the ball as well. That's not to take away anything from their defense, either. That front seven led by Carson Cobb at linebacker is absolutely phenomenal. Guys, this Horizon team is built to win a championship. I think this Horizon team is actually better than the team we saw two years ago win that 5A title. And I would not be surprised if the Huskies are the ones who are hosting that gold ball at the end of the season, whether it be over Desert Edge, over Desert Mountain, or over another 5A team that can make a run, like Higley, for example. You are on that train, Zach. I mean, sometimes we, we all in this space get on that train because I was on their train two years ago when it was my first full season cover, I remember seeing them in week one beat Pinnacle for the first time. I was like, that's a team that's going to hoist a gold ball. So you're, you're on it. You're on it with coach Litton right now. That's cool. Um, moving over to six, a, we've got a really big matchup. South point Catholic at Brophy region title at play, potentially now after the losses by desert mountain and desert edge an open spot on the line. I mean, both teams have been hot as of late South point, big win over Saguaro last week. Brophy has looked like a much improved team from early on in the year to now. Where do you guys stand on this one? Do you think either of them or both of them deserve to be in the open Zach? Yeah. You know, the South point team is kind of strange to me in some ways because I've seen them on film, at least struggle against a team like desert Vista. I've seen them struggle against teams like Bernard del Sol who are maybe just in the, in the playoff spot for the, for the six, a conference or maybe outside like desert Vista is. But then I've also seen them beat teams like Saguaro, who are obviously, despite, you know, a four and five record, it's still Saguaro. It's still a team that has a ton of talent everywhere. I don't really know exactly what to think about the South Point Catholic team. I, it kind of just depends on which team we get Friday night. But I do think this game is going to be very close. I mean, anytime you have Elijah rushing and Keona Wilhite at, your, at both defensive end positions, you're probably going to make some plays defensively to keep the game close. And their offense has also been picking up a little bit as well. But, you know, looking at the other side, Brophy, I mean, this Brophy Broncos team is playing lights out football right now. Um, you know, they they put it on Mountain Point pretty good. I think it was like 44 to 7. And Mountain Point's a team that on paper should be a lot better than they have been this season so far. Um, you know, same thing with defensive ends. You've got uh, Devin Kennedy and, and Mardell Rowe, Billy Eastip at safety, um, you know, Vanden Bosch at linebacker. I mean, this team is 
filled with talent as well. So, yeah, you know, it's funny. I talked to Jason Jewell just a, a couple of days ago, and he even said, you know, we could make the open if we went out. And I was like, you know what? You're actually right. I haven't really thought about Brophy as much because I considered them, you know, a top one, two, or three seed in 6A. But the Broncos, if they win, could very well find themselves in the open division. Eric, where do you stand on this? I'm excited for Catholics versus Catholics. I mean, this is a big game, not just for the Open, but also uh, the region title. Uh, whoever wins Friday gets the region title. Great points by Zach. The, these two teams have elite defensive line play. And the one thing, guys, I'm hoping we really see is Logan Powell, Brophy's stud 2025 tackle who has a ton of Power 5 offers up against Elijah rushing. That would be a super interesting battle in the trenches. I'm going to flip it over and talk a little bit about the offense. I think Charlie McGinnis for Brophy could be the X factor. Last year, he was turnover prone. He had 10 interceptions. This season, only three picks in 238 pass attempts. He's got over 2,000 total yards, and he's taking care of the ball. And I think that could be the deciding factor is if Brophy can get things going. I know Sal Point is more run heavy. Brophy has a little bit more balance offensively. That could be one of the biggest things to watch Friday night. Good stuff as always, guys. Big games. Final week of the regular season. We didn't even touch on the battle for Arizona Avenue and Centennial Liberty. Obviously going to shake up the open rankings a little bit, depending on those ones play out. I know you guys will be all over doing your thing. So thanks again for the insight. As always, this is AZ Audibles brought to you by Ortho Arizona. We'll see you next week for the postseason.